Hi, I'm Jen. I recently graduated master's student in the Diamondis Lab. And here at the Diamondis Lab, we study the brain, which is arguably the most complex organ in the body. But how does it become that way? How does it develop and how does it fold? How does it become the structure that allows us to think, create and function? In the following minutes, we'll cover a very broad scheme of how the brain develops, starting from the blastocyst. And we begin at about three weeks after conception. Okay, so if I want to explain, so we have our ectodermal layer, our mesodermal layer, and our endodermal layer. For the purposes of studying neurodevelopment, we're only going to focus on the ectodermal layer, since it's out of this germ layer that our brain structure actually arises from. I'm going to fast forward to around four weeks post-conception where something called neurulation takes place. So this is our ectodermal layer, and it begins to thicken and flatten, and essentially the neural plate begins to arise as a structure within the ectodermal layer. This neural plate possesses neuroepithelial cells, which are the precursor cells to a lot of other more mature cells of the nervous system. After separation of this neural plate from the rest of the ectodermal layer, the ends of the neural plate will then push up against each other and fold in on itself, like so. And finally, you're left with a final structure after the invagination of a purely epithelial layer and a neural tube structure. And this neural tube structure is the very beginnings of our brain, and this forms our brain and our spinal cord. So as development progresses, many proliferative areas surrounding this ventricle-like middle will undergo something called symmetrical division. And this is when our neural stem cells or our neural epithelial cells will start regenerating many, many forms of itself and populate and essentially they want to amplify the existing numbers of neural stem cells. So we go from a small neural tube structure over here to to a much bigger one, which is then able to form our brain and essentially have this, the right numbers of neural stem cells for the mass neurogenesis that is to follow. Where our neural stem cells, otherwise known as our neuroepithelial cells, become mature neurons. So now we're in the process of neurogenesis, which begins around eight weeks of gestation and continues to 20 weeks of gestation. And during these periods, many neural stem cells, as mentioned before, will become mature neurons. Within our brain, we have two different regions that are major sources of neural stem cells and eventually form the cortex and other surrounding brain structures. So this is a basic brain structure at around 14 to 16 weeks of gestation. And so I'm just going to label this. This is our ventricle-like area. And if you recall, it was essentially that gap within the neural tube. So this ventricle-like area is surrounded by many proliferative regions. So we have a ventricular zone, so-called the ventricular zone since it's bordering the ventricle, and then we have something called a subventricular zone. And the subventricular zone arises out of the ventricular zone as a secondary proliferative area that also has a unique population of neural stem cells. And from here, we have some, they can be then once again subdivided 
into specific eminences. So here is the medial ganglionic eminence, and here is the lateral ganglionic eminence. So these both regions are part of our ventral <laughs> subventricular zone. We also have populations of cells up here, and these are parts of our dorsal subventricular zone. All these regions, the MGE, the LGE, and our dorsal subventricular zone, which I would call the DSVZ, these are all highly proliferative areas that contribute to form, that contribute neural stem cells that eventually go on to form neurons of the cortex, the striatum, and other brain structures. So the very interesting part about these regions, so we're just focusing on the ventral subventricular zones, the two ganglionic eminences here, and the dorsal subventricular zone. There's also something known as a caudal ganglion eminence, uh, but we will discuss that later in a different video. Um, essentially, when we're looking at these regions here, the interesting thing about it is that the neural stem cells that belong to the MGE, the LGE, and the dorsal subventricular zone, they all give rise to different types of mature neurons and different types of mature neurons that go to different brain structures. So for example, the medial ganglionic eminence, these neural stem cells here, they will give rise to GABAergic interneurons of the cortex. And these neurons essentially have inhibitory action and they regulate and essentially um, allow for proper functioning and forming of networks within the cortex. The lateral ganglionic eminence here, these neural stem cells, they will also form GABAergic interneurons. However, these interneurons will migrate to the corpus striatum another structure that eventually becomes the basal ganglia of our adult brain. And then in the dorsal subventricular zone, these neural stem cells here, they will become glutaminergic, tergic, what? tergic? I think I spelled this wrong, <laughs> neurons of the cortex. And these are excitatory in nature. And these are the neurons that we imagine when we think, when we say that we're thinking, these are the neurons that are firing and causing our networks to rewire. These are the neurons that help regulate these glutaminergic neurons. So essentially we have two major population of neurons within the cortex that are both inhibitory and uh, excitatory, and they come from two different proliferative regions. So this is the really interesting part about human neurodevelopment. We know that these, these different regions within the highly proliferative areas of our fetal brain, though they have seemingly similar populations of neural stem cells, they somehow give rise to different mature neurons of different brain structures. And this is something that scientists are still trying to figure out to this day. And this is a highly broad categorization of the types of mature neurons that we have. But in fact, there are over 50 different types of neurons and new ones keep being discovered every single day. So stay tuned. <laughs> so if you liked today's video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.